morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let me welcome you all to our launch, the launch of Ecrate Zero. We have launched a number of firsts, for the first to introduce broadband, the first to introduce news on demand. There are a number of firsts that we've been introducing to the market. But uh, one unique thing that we've learned is that uh, in everything we do, we put God first. It's all about Him. So I would like to ask Mr. Shindy to bless this event before we start. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Let us bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you because you are God. And we know you are seated on your throne even at this time, oh my God. We thank you, Father, for this event. Thank you, Father, for giving us the power the ability to do the things that we have been doing, to introduce the product that we have been introducing in this market. We want to give you honor and glory for everything that we are able to do. But we pray and we ask the leadership of the Holy Spirit even in this very event. We thank you for the success, not only of this you know, event, but the success of the product that we are launching today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Shindi, for the word of prayer. Um, let me take this opportunity to welcome the media people. These are our partners in the house. Uh, if you look at media, they play a critical role in educating, in informing, and we just want to welcome them to this uh, Equal Zero launch. Um, we have got uh, teachers and headmasters in the house. We just want to appreciate your presence. Uh, I know you have got a very difficult assignment of driving these uh, institutions of learning, but you have spared this time to be with us at this important launch. We we'll welcome you all to this event. We have got students. I see some are in uniforms, um, some are dressed in suits. I know today is Tuesday. Yeah, some of you guys uh, you have absconded missed <laughs> lessons to be with us. We, we appreciate that. We want to extend our warm welcome to you all. We appreciate uh, your presence here. We have got uh, parents again. We have graced this event. We appreciate you again. We acknowledge your presence. We have got a very special guest from embassies. Uh, so, embassy of Malawi. And other embassies, we have got UNICEF and other distinguished guests who are present today. We just want to welcome you all to this important event. It's uh, Econet Zero. It's an exciting innovation which we are about to unveil. Uh, given my CV today, I'm not very much anointed to share with you what it is all about. But I will ask Ms. Nandenga just to unveil to you what this zero thing is all about. Ms. Nandenga, this is your time to share with the team what the zero proposition is all about. Thank you. I will just take a leaf from Pardon and uh, ask that you please allow me to say all protocol is observed, uh, but also ask for him to allow me to just recognize the presence of uh, Mr. Ozeni, Lisa from UNICEF, and uh, Mr. Makina from the Embassy of uh, Malawi. It's always good to be given an opportunity to be the one to speak at a meeting such as this. It does not signify how important I am. It just signifies that I'm an important member of the team just like all of you are. Because a body is made up of many elements. And 
each one of elements has got a role to play. It was on the 31st of January this year when we launched uh, Eco School at the University of Zimbabwe in the Great Hall, where we announced that this is now education for a new generation, where we defined Eco School as an educational platform that offers educators and scholars access to affordable, reliable, anytime, anywhere, on your fingertips, educational content of world-class standards. Which means that our students here in Zimbabwe have got access to the same educational content that any other student in the world has. So there are no excuses whatsoever. <coughs> You know, uh, last week I attended, attended a conference in uh, one of the East African countries. I was a speaker there. And at the end of my presentation, uh, a participant made an observation, said that it appears like Econet seems to be on the path of identifying challenges in the societies and developing their business models around those problems. Why are you doing that? Uh, after I was done with my res response, he wished he had not asked. <laughs> and I don't have enough time to give you the answer I gave. But in short, my response was, the reason why we identify the problems that the societies have, and the reason why we provide the solutions to those problems, is simply because it is the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. You see, we belong to society. We belong to a community. We belong to a nation. You know, these days when you read newspapers and magazines and you go to conferences, they talk about this word inclusion as if it never existed before. But for those of you that are proud to be Africans like me, you know that inclusiveness has always been part of us. You might have heard of the word Ubuntu. I am because you are. Mm -hmm. And because I am and you are, we are. Mm -hmm. And there's no way that Econet would have succeeded had we not been concerned about the communities within which we live in. This is why from the onset, we summarized our promise to our customers and the communities within which we operate in as we are inspired to change your world. For us, it has never been about the technology. It has never been about the equipment. We see a lot of stories in the newspapers talking about base station, sharing, USSD gateway, mobile switching centers. We hear about intelligent networks, billing systems. For us, it has always been about transforming people's lives for the better. And the vision and the mission and the values that we share in common culminate into a shared philosophy within the organization that says that what can be done should be done. And what can't be done must be done. This is the reason why uh, Pardon didn't uh, spend enough time to talk about the first that we have recorded, not only in this nation but in the world, because it's a long list. We could spend the whole morning here. The reason why we are able to do those things first ahead of everybody is because of one of our values, which is that we are pioneering. We will always be there and not the tail. We don't mind people coming behind us and copying because it just confirms that we are a leader. So we do not mind that. We don't have a problem with it. It just encourages us to go on. This is why we have moved on. We are looking into education, we are looking into health, we are looking into insurance. We're looking into entertainment, we're looking into power. Why are we doing that? Because there's a problem. And somebody needs to step up and provide solutions to those problems. Some of you might be aware of the history of Econet in Zimbabwe. How we got our license. For us, it is never about the things that people talk about. It is always about the inspiration that we talk about. The inspiration which represents our willingness, our commitment our inner drive, the passion. 
the boldness, the tenacity, the aggression with which we do everything that we do. I'm afraid to say if you're in here and you're trying to stop us from doing something, you've got a big problem. <laughs> because what we are doing is right. And because what we are doing is right, fortunately for us, the money always follows where business. The money always follows if you are doing the right thing. They also asked me to say, but where is the business case? I said, oh, man, the business case is in the numbers. A lot of businesses are ignoring what is called the bottom of the pyramid. It sounds like some kind of disease. They say bottom of the pyramid as if you're not people. These are people. Yes, they may not have as much money as we do, but guess what? They are making the same phone calls that you are making and they are paying the same amount that everybody else is paying. Mm -hmm. The challenge that we have as a business is to say, how do we make it more affordable for them? How do we make it more accessible to them? We have come to believe as a business that when you look at the basic needs, we would rather look at them as human rights. Just like in Econet we have said everybody has got the right to communicate. How about everybody having a right to access to of quality education? Mm -hmm. Right of access to financial services. Mm -hmm. Right of access to affordable health services. Mm -hmm. Right of access to power. Mm -hmm. What if our constitutions had all those embedded? What will you do? What will I do? Well, we know that to rewrite constitutions is a process. <laughs> it takes quite a bit of time. So as a business, we're not going to wait for any rewriting of any constitution. Wow. We're going to take responsibility and start providing the solutions now. Today, I stand before you because we are inspired to change the world of educators, the world of students, in the world of the parents that are supposed to be paying for the education. Who say that education cannot be free? Remember, what can be done should be done. What can't be done must be done. We believe that for as long as you can see it, it is temporary. This is why, and this is a wild example, but it will drive the message home. This is why people are modifying their bodies, their faces, because they can see. <laughs> but uh, instead of just concentrating on the body, let's look at some other things that are even more important. Is life not more important than the body? It is. So why don't we do things that change lives? If you can see it, it is temporary. If you can see a blackboard and a teacher writing with chalk, that's temporary because you can see it, it can be changed. <coughs> if you see, I was talking to the headmaster of the Philippi High School here, and I was saying, I'm so happy that you are supportive of our program, mm. but you know where we are going? We won't need teachers. <laughs> <laughs> we won't need headmasters. <laughs> because we are creating an environment where students can learn on their own. We're giving them access, free access. So what is the need for a teacher? Because what is now happening also, the challenge that the teachers are having is that some of the students, the students are privileged enough to have access to some information which unfortunately the teachers do not have. <laughs> and then they say, this teacher is so late. That's the language you use, isn't it? You know, you're, you're so late because He's talking about some 1980 stuff and you guys are talking 2020, which hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. yeah. What <coughs> can't be done, must be done. Mobile penetration in Zimbabwe today is at over 100%. Because we believed in 1998 that every Zimbabwe should have access to a cell phone. <coughs> At the time when we were pushing for it, there's a statistic that we always used to quote, and Mr. Mboweni will remember. At the time, 75% of Africans living in Africa had never had a cell phone ring, let alone seen one. 
This is 1998. 75%. Which means that mobile penetration for Africa was below 15%. Today, Zimbabwe is over 100%. And you might be surprised to know that we have not only impacted Zimbabwe, but we have impacted the whole of Africa. Mm. You should not be surprised if I tell you that the first mobile phone call that was made in Botswana was made on an Econet network. Wow. You should not be surprised if I tell you that the first mobile phone call that was made in Nigeria was made on an Econet wireless network. He couldn't wireless Nigeria. Mr. Mboweni was there. I was there. Today, Africa has got over 750 million mobile phone users because of a revolution we started in 1998. It liberated the airwaves. And it's still growing. Now, with over 750 million people with the cell phone in their hands, we are asking ourselves the question, what else can we do? And we can't sleep. You find it uncomfortable to sleep. I don't know some people manage to sleep at 8, 9, <laughs> 10. I, 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 I don't know. You know, I, I want to be honest. Uh, Mr. Moen, I still want to be paid. But uh, I want to confess that. I find what I am doing, and, and, and my team uh, will also agree with me that we find it a way of life now. It is not work anymore. You know, it's such a cool place to be at. Where you, some people think you are working, but you are enjoying what you are doing, and at the end of the month, you get paid for it. <laughs> I mean, it's just awesome. <laughs> Seeing the lives that are being transformed, hearing the testimonies that are coming from the people, there's nothing more satisfying than that. Even with Eco School, you know, it's only about 30 days, the number of phone calls letters, emails that we have received from the students that are using this service. It's just overwhelming. It's very, very humbling. And they're saying, we never realized. You see, marketing is a very tricky subject. Uh, people like Kotler, again, it's old, eh? Mm. So now you need to quote other people. Quote yourselves. Kotler says that marketing is the process of identifying the needs and wants of the customer. <laughs> identifying the needs and wants. But it appears that sometimes the customer does not really know what they want. What do you do? We only discover it now when you start introducing services like this when people come forward to say, I, you know, I knew that there was something I didn't know exactly how to put it. They always know what they want, but they don't know what they want. And uh, I was telling Mr. Chingonzo to say, we need to interact a lot more. Um, you know, that's, that's the only way that we can provide solutions that are sustainable, that create an impact in the lives of our people. Coming to internet, Mr. Boyne, I understand mobile penetration, uh, internet, internet penetration in Africa um, is growing. But we are happy to announce that Zimbabwe is amongst the highest mm -hmm. in Africa, approaching 60%. Yeah. Wow. Mobile internet penetration higher than Nigeria. Yeah. Wow. We are doing well. But the question is, what are we browsing <laughs> on the internet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> Facilities like they have on DSTV, those parental guidance and whatever. <laughs> because we are busy browsing stuff that is not adding value to our lives. Because if you drill down the statistics now to look at the websites that are being browsed, you find that far, far, far from it, education is not, it's not featured. Mm -hmm. Entertainment, fashion, music, football, rugby, all sorts of but education? No. But you know, we were thinking about it and we've said this is actually not new, Mr. Boy. Because if you learn through the internet, it's like distance learning. Distance learning is not new. Mm -hmm. We've got presidents of 
nations. We've got a lot of people with degrees, not one, two, three degrees that are even higher than the highest thermometer I can take. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how they acquire those degrees? Distance learning. Yes. Some of them are from prison. Mm -hmm. What about you? In the comfort of your homes, you can do distance learning. Yes. I have a computer. Mm. What about device, tablet? There is no excuse in this day and age. One of our regulators likes that statement to say, in this day and age. Mm. In this day and age. Like we must say, hey, you know. <laughs> so when you go to him and say, we've got a solution, he says, ah, no, Dorish, this one is too aggressive. You must wait. You must. Because everything that we are doing, if we have to change lives, mm -hmm. it has to be disruptive. Mm -hmm. It's going to make some people uncomfortable. You know, my headmaster here, but I like him because he's a, he says, ah, look, let it come. You know, he will reinvent himself. But you know, when you bring in technology that is relevant, it's going to change things. The game has changed. So because the game has changed, you cannot play this new game with the rules of the old game. You can't play soccer with rugby rules. It doesn't work. So when we are going also, we do not expect any excuses from the children. What we are doing today is something that has never been done say that we are inspired to change the world. I say that we are pioneering. I say that we are bold, we are, we are tenacious, we are aggressive. I say that we we'll do things that have never been done. What we are doing is not only a first in the mobile industry in Zimbabwe, it's not a first in the mobile industry in Africa, it's a first in the mobile industry in the world. Wow. If you don't believe them, ask the GSMA Association. <clears throat> they will tell you that this is the first time ever that a mobile network operator has opened up over 50 websites. Not just websites, but educational websites. Mm. Not just educational websites, but educational websites of high quality, international standards. Not only opened them up, but opened up for access for free. For free. Education has become free at last. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty, education is free at last. <laughs> it is up to you how you want to view this. But it is free. Everybody can access it. You just have to be an Econet customer. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Nothing more. Is it difficult? The SIM cards are almost for free. If anybody doesn't want to part with 50 cents, I'll buy them. the SIM card for them. I'll buy a SIM card for you, your husband, your wife, your children, your security, your entire village. I'll buy the SIM card for you. <laughs> so you can access education for free. The master was telling me that education is he's so passionate, you can tell that education is the most important thing. Mm. But in the past, people have had excuses to say, ah, it's expensive, you see, I can't go to Yale, I can't access this material, I can't. Now it's there, mm. for free. Mm. What's the next excuse? We don't even have to wear uniform anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to change. Change that is positive. You know, the guys have prepared the presentation for me, as usual, many slides. But I said, I don't need many slides. I tried to reduce it to zero, like equal <laughs> zero. But I failed, and I came up with two slides. The first one and the second one that you are seeing now, which is introducing equal zero. To sum it up, equal zero is free education. In, if I can speak in consumer language, layman's language, Econet Zero is free education. We're giving access to students, to educators, to anybody interested in learning, access to free educational websites. Free. 
So far, we are at 50. In fact, it's over 50 and growing. And when you look at the quality of those sites, it's not normal. I saw that uh, one of the publications here uh, did a, a, a story on how a South African mobile operator had launched you know, uh, a free website, Wikipedia, but it was limited. We are not launching Wikipedia alone. We're not launching limited Wikipedia. We are launching MOOCs, massive <coughs> open online courses, free, the likes of Coursera. Coursera itself has got over 600 online courses that are free. We're bringing you mathematics. We're bringing you languages. We're bringing you research. We're, we're bringing you music. Anything that you can think of, right from primary school, kindergarten, we've got ABC. For children, young children, primary school, high school, university, everything is now available. There's no excuse. The reason why I said I didn't want to do a long presentation was, I'm not a student, okay, I'm still learning. They say that learning never ends, right? Um, but I'm studying other things. Um, but I said to the team, let us get the users. Let us get the students themselves. Let us get the teachers. Let us, let us get the headmasters to come and tell us what their experience has been with this service that we are launching. Because maybe we are just, uh, you know, self-praising. Maybe this thing is not as useful as we think it is. So what we are going to do now is we are going to give an opportunity to the students. We've got quite a number of them, primary school, secondary school, we've got university, to give testimonies. We've got teachers, we've got a headmaster. They will tell us what their experience has been, how they see this thing. And uh, I've also said to some of them, what else do you think we should do? Please tell us. We know that you may not know what you want us to do, but just talk to us. <laughs> and in talking to us, we'll be able to pick some ideas. So, uh, without taking any much more of your time, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to give this floor to the very important people, the customers, the ones that are using this service to give us some testimonies. Yeah? I don't know if they want to do it in any order, but I'm just going to open it up to you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Good morning to you all ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ropa. I'm an A-level student at Arundel School. Now, uh, I was born in 1995 and Econet has been there since 1998. So I've kind of grown up with Econet and from my perspective, <laughs> from my perspective, Econet has always been that network with the first, like the please call me back. So we didn't know what that was in Zimbabwe. Then Econet brought it and they have saved lives. They're the first ones who brought us broadband. And Econet has always meant something to me as a child because of that. And now they've done something so great, and this time it's personal. And I'm talking about Econet Zero. See, I, when I was in Form 2, I fell in love with physics. And this is my favorite subject to this day. I breathe physics. If someone drops a phone, the rest of the class who dropped his phone, I think acceleration of gravity. <laughs> And that, that is my favorite subject, but physics walks hand in hand with maths, and maths was never, my maths was never as strong as my physics. Mm. But that doesn't mean that I didn't want it to be as strong as my physics. A wise man once said, the key to success is doing.